Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Rolex Oyster Quartz Day Date, reference 19018 in yellow gold. You can see this 1978 vintage quartz chronometer and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this Oyster Quartz Date 8 reference 19018. Now the watch on my wrist and I'm going to go a little bit darker with aperture because it does catch an awful lot of the light in my light box. The watch on my wrist was released in 1977, discontinued by about 2001. During that period, all Oyster Quartz models, Datejust and Daydate, were built in quantities estimated at approximately 25,000 units, all metals, all models, all years. Now, given Rolex's production, which never fell below several hundred thousand units for that entire period of time, that span of decades, you get a sense of just how rare these watches are. And the vast majority of those 25,000 were the date just, not the day date. This was truly the king of the Rolex catalog for a number of decades between the late 70s and early 2000s. A flagship watch with a running gear, a movement to match. This is the rare quartz timepiece that is both an heirloom quality, lasting artifact, and at the same time of horological interest to watch connoisseurs typically smitten by mechanical movements enduring and intellectually appealing. The watch is also gorgeous on the wrist. You can see why this watch was once considered to be at the forefront of Rolex design. It does speak to its era. As you can see, the cushion shape of the case and the integration of lug, case, and bracelet is distinctly Gerald Genta influenced and redolent of the late 1970s. At the same time, there's a level of detailing and a beauty in the proportion that makes it timeless in its appeal. It's also quite wearable. At 36 millimeters across the round of the case, this is an easy watch to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. From lug to lug, an eminently reasonable 44 millimeters. It's exactly as you would expect on a 36 millimeter day date or date just. I'll also say that at 12 millimeters thick with a generously sloped fluted yellow gold bezel, it easily slides underneath a dress cuff. Now there's something about the cushion profile of the case or the integration of the bracelet that makes this more wearable even than your typical smaller Rolex watch on a bracelet. There's a fluid comfort to the flow of this bracelet around the wrist, compounded by the fact that there's no flare imparted by solid end links. You can literally pull the bracelet straight down around a smaller wrist. Therefore, the level of comfort and the security of the fit is outstanding. And because this is an entirely integrated case and bracelet system, there are some quirks, such as the presence of both serial and reference numbers underneath the lugs as opposed to between them. Of course, the bracelet beautifully constructed, you'll note the polished bevel of the case flank continues royal oak style into the flow of the tapered links. Satin on their exterior, outer shoulders polished, center links polished. The clasp is substantial, entirely intact, remains outstanding in its tolerances, and you'll note it does borrow one feature from the much loved Rolex President bracelet. In honor of the Date 8's heritage, oyster quartz or not, the crown clasp returns, the only partition point in the two sides of the bracelet being the five-point coronet. Moving back to the case, you can see that it's largely intact. It survived the ravages of year uncommonly well. I should mention that this watch has a serial number of approximately 5.5 million, which makes it one of the earlier Oyster Quartz day dates produced in approximately 1978. When this watch rolled out of Geneva, it was the absolute flagship of the line. And not just because of the style, we're going to get into the movement and why you, as a mechanical watch guy, want this movement. Let's talk a little bit about the case. Beautifully finished, solid, and imposing. It contributes to the impressive heft of this watch. It has a mass that exceeds expectations on the wrist. It also has a larger wrist presence because of the continuity of the flow of metal from one side to the other creates almost an integrated bracelet look. A jewelry that's acceptable for men, if you will. And thus, the watch has a lot of gravitas when worn on the forearm despite its compact profile. The Crystal should be noted as sapphire, as the Oyster Quartz family was one of the first to receive sapphire crystals across the board. The bezel, yellow gold and fluted, is 
wonderfully intact. And in fact, if I had to rate the individual components of the watch, I would say that the bracelet in terms of condition is about a 7.5 out of 10. I would say that the case itself is an eight. The clasp in terms of tolerances, as well as definition of the hallmarks and the maker's marks within, I'd rate that as a 10. And I would rate the dial as a 10 out of 10. And the dial is stellar on this watch. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer and focus in. There you go. Now you can see the glorious effect of the golden sunburst. The faded tritium on the hands as well as the small dots outboard of the applied yellow gold indices, which are both faceted and polished. The stylized railroad track outboard of the minutes and seconds hand. And you'll note the stylized Roman numerals within the railroad. Attention to detail is rich with this one. Golden discs for the day and the date, corresponding to the coloration of the case and the dial. You'll also note, although I don't know if you can quite hear, how precisely the seconds hand steps, always perfectly aligned with the railroad track, never staggering, never jumping, never quivering. This is achieved using a Swiss lever. Now we begin to get into the mechanism within. Now I mentioned that the watch is hefty on the wrist. The screwed in solid gold case back helps to achieve that. You thread out the screwed in crown. It is after all an oyster quartz and thus there is an oyster case. Let's keep our focus here. The watch features a Rolex manufacturer caliber 5055 with 11 jewels, beautifully finished bridges and plates, watchmaker serviceable running gear, and yes, a Swiss lever escapement to step the hand along at one hertz. Its impetus is a stepper motor, but the watch actually has an audible Swiss lever escapement that's used to attain perfect precision for the seconds hand. You feel it, you hear it on the wrist. It has the same personality and the heartbeat of a mechanical watch, only instead of between five and 10 beats per second, you hear exactly one. And that's a remarkable step down from the 32,768 hertz of the quartz oscillator. What you get is a thermocompensated quartz timing system. One of the rare thermocompensated quartz calibers. It's also a COSC certified chronometer. The combination of the two extraordinarily rare as the COSC standards for quartz are exacting and most manufacturers simply leave well enough alone alone with a quartz caliber, it's more accurate than a mechanical watch. Why go to the extra steps necessary to thermocompensate and attain a COSC certificate? Well, Rolex didn't ask why. The answer was, we're Rolex, and we're going to build the most capable dress watch quartz caliber available at any price. And indeed, that's what they did, really rivaled only by the Omega Marine chronometers, calibers 1510, 1511 back in the day. This remains an extraordinary timekeeper with an estimated accuracy per Rolex of about two to five seconds a month. Keep in mind, the total deviation for an entire year was estimated to be no worse than 60 seconds. Compare that to a Swiss mechanical chronometer, minus four plus six seconds per day, or even Grand Seiko and Seiko Spring spring drive, plus or minus 15 seconds per month. This is an impressive machine, hugely accomplished, and because Rolex expected it to last a lifetime, Rolex added a quartz trimmer system, so you could automatically, if you were the watchmaker servicing the watch, you could dial in easily a sort of trimming adjustment that could compensate for the drift of the quartz crystal over time. This watch was designed to last decades, and so was the movement, right down to the ability to compensate for the aging of the quartz oscillator. A lifetime serviceable movement built by a watchmaker with polished screw heads, blazoned with Cote de Genève on its rhodium-plated brass plates and bridges. This is as good as it gets in the world of quartz. This is quartz with a soul. And as I said, with 25,000 both Datejust and Datedate made over a quarter of a century, these are some of the rarest modern Rolex. The ones with immaculate dials in perfect running order are the ones to own. And the Datedates, far less common than the Datejusts, are the princes among the lot. This is a watch that has everything from a quick set for its date to a hacking function so you can set it precisely. This is a watch that gives you all of the privileges of quartz, such as the ability to have your day date set for days, weeks, months at a time and not worry about resetting it with a two to three year life for the battery, giving you that precision. 
two to five seconds per month of accuracy and giving you a great way to enter the world of vintage Rolex that has not yet been corrupted by the auction and the blog scene. The day dates time will come, the day justs time will come within the Oyster Quartz family. Make sure that your date, your date with the day date comes before that time. Beat the market, beat the blogs, beat the auction block. See this one and own it on our website.